today during art club about, let me just move everything over here a little bit more, um, about doing some watercolour experiments based on Maria Ortega Estepa. It's a great name and Jelly Green, great name. We like her name or his name. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Um, so I'm going to have a little look at doing some layered watercolour paintings with you today. You said you weren't 100% confident about doing some watercolour layers. So we're going to have a try at this. Okay, it's very Maria Ortega Estepa inspired. I've just had to have a little try and a little plaster, uh, practice as well. But if you can see along the top, you can see the kinds of stages we're going to go for. I've got one of her pictures in front of me as example. I quite like this one. She's got an actual tree in the front here. We're going to come back to that later. But I thought this was a good example picture. So the first thing I've done here is I've just started off with a really light watercolour wash. And the way you're going to do that is by really watering down your paints and adding a very, very loose layer of watercolour at the base. So I've just got some yellow. You can see I've done a bit of a gradient. So I've gone from yellow to a kind of green, mixed a little bit of blue in there, but I've kept it very, very light and very soft, just like this stage here. Okay, sorry, it's a little bit dark in there. Just like this stage there. Um, I don't know if I can get another light. No, I can't. Um, so that's our first layer just there. You have to let it dry before you can move on. OK, so it is, you do have to have a bit of patience with this. It's going to be very annoying um, the amount of time you're going to have to wait in between layers. I had all four of these on the go at the same time. So you could be doing a few experiments at once. I would highly recommend that. Get yourself three or four pieces of paper. Do yourself three or four backgrounds. Because if you make one and walk away, wait till it dries, do a layer. If one of the layers goes wrong eventually, you haven't got anything to work with. So I'd get yourself three, four, five pieces of paper and do three or four washes on the backgrounds to start with. So you've got something to work with. You can try slightly different tones and colours um, and you can use them. And then if one goes wrong, you're OK because you're working on lots. You could even make a little mini version of this, what I have here. It'd be lovely for your sketchbook to show refinement of skills. If you could, I'll send you photographs of this as well. If you could make yourself this little step by step for your book as well, that would be really great and helpful. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a slightly darker green colour. You can't see. So I've used, I'm going to use the same colours I've used in the background, my yellows, my greens, my blues. Might mix a tiny bit of brown in there to kind of darken down the colour a little bit. And I'm just going to start off with my first layer. Now, actually, before I go forward, what I'd recommend doing, I've left a bit of a space here in the bottom corner. I would recommend, like I've done over here, practicing some of the shapes and lines that Maria Ortega Stepper uses in her work. So when I've zoomed into her paintings, I'm finding all of these different patterns. First of all, I looked at her trees and how she generally paints her trees. Okay, she does them as quite long, straight lines. I might want to give it a few extra branches, but I'd have a little practice at how you're going to do some of these shapes. Okay, so your tree designs. Um, do also practice some of the leaf work and things like that that she does. Get yourself a brush. Before you start on your actual piece, have a little practice with some paints on some of the shapes because you're going to need them later on. So it's worth refining that. Again, you could do that on a separate piece of paper. Have a little practice. I see a lot of leaves like that in her work. Okay, little design pieces. I'm using a few different colours. She does a few that's a little bit more kind of straight and longer leaves, almost like bent leaves. Like that. Have a little practice of the kind of shapes you want first. Be confident. Like I said, if they go wrong, do a few. And if they go wrong, they go wrong. But I'd have a little start off and see which ones you're happy with. Okay, So we're going to practice that first, just so we've got the shapes. A few of those in the bottom corner would work really well. So I'm going to take my tree shapes, like I said, a slightly darker colour than my background, but not too dark yet. We're going for this kind of layer now, this very light washed green. OK, and we can afford to go fairly a good size here. I found in my practices that when I just went everywhere, it didn't come out as well. I think I'm finding that if you work towards the middle, it comes out a lot better. Okay, and what I mean by that is work as if there's nothing in the middle, almost like it's a corridor for your trees and your trees are kind of coming out and around from that corridor space. You can see they're very watered down. You can probably, you might even be able to barely see them on the camera. But I'm keeping them very loose, very watery. Just a few trees in the background. And again, look at silhouettes of trees, practice these shapes. They're not as easy as they look. 
Now I found the first couple I painted I wasn't super happy with, but I've got some trees very lightly washed just happening there. Okay, and I'm gonna again you're gonna need to leave that to dry for a while. The problem is if you don't if you let it dry, you'll be able to get a bit more of an effect like this where you get really solid colours on top of each other. If I now add the next layer onto this and start painting another tree, they're all gonna start bleeding into each other and it's not gonna quite work as well. Okay, like that. I'm gonna get paint bleed. So you will have to wait a little while. So I may press pause for a second and let it dry for a minute. Okay, so that's dry now. So as I said, you need to leave it to dry. So now I'm going to do my next layer of trees. And like I said before, I'm going to work out from the edges. I found that if you leave the middle and kind of as if the trees are all coming round, I think that works better. So obviously with trees you need to have a thicker trunk at the bottom. Practice your tree shapes. Look up some tree sh silhouette shapes to help you. I might go in a bit darker with that. You will need a bit of practice about how much water to add to your watercolours until you're happy. You know, the idea is just with this, you're going to get a little bit thicker each time. So you want to consider how much thickness you want at the start. So I'm kind of curving around here, a bit weird. But still, you get the idea. In fact, I'll bring a little bit around there so you can see. What they would look like. You can see what they look like without the colour underneath. It definitely goes a lot lighter. So building up these layers will bring in those extra colours. So that's that layer. I might start with some of these little shapes in the bottom. You can see I've added a few more shapes. Might start bringing a few of those in as well. Maybe I'll get a slightly different. Maybe I'll get a bluey colour. If you look at Maria Ortega Stepper's work, play around with some of her colours. See, I'm going to use a bit of blue. Start building up some of that background. Maybe in the background, maybe I'll do a few more trees a bit smaller. Just there, but still a little bit faded. I don't know what that was. Bringing our shapes in. I might even have a few watered down kind of viney things coming. Maybe a few coming over the top. Again, have a couple of sheets free. And you can just play around. And if you don't like it, the great thing with watercolour, if you get yourself a bit of tissue, if you don't like it, you can, as long as you do it fairly quickly before it dries, you can mostly get rid of it. If you make a mistake and you add water, if you have a look at these lines I've got there, if you add some water to that and dab it away, you can rub out watercolour. If you do it fairly quickly and it's quite watery, you can literally add some water over the top, you know, move it around a bit to get it loose and watery again, and then you can get rid of it. Okay, I'll let that dry for another minute. Okay, it's not quite dry yet, but I'm getting impatient, so. So then we're going to build up one of our last layers, okay? And I'm going to actually start getting some quite vibrant blue here. Again, have the steppers work in front of you for a little bit of reference. And this is where I'm going to start actually putting in. Oh, it's still wet. It's so annoying. I don't want to wait anymore. I'm going to have to. Okay, that's a little bit better. You can imagine how much time this is going over. Quite a lot. Right, so now I'm going to start building up a layer with some of these little leaf designs and leaf patterns in something a little bit more vibrant. Actually, that might be too vibrant. Oh, sorry, that's my... Uh... Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Okay, so I'm going to start building up some of these patterns and some of these shapes from Maria Ortega Stepper's work. So maybe a few of the little, maybe a few more leaves. So obviously you need to have a little think about what kind of look you want to go for. I'm going for a forest here, but actually Maria Ortega Stepper's work is quite, I'm definitely gonna need a smaller brush, a good tip. Just thinking that, go for a smaller brush when you want to do finer details. Um, Maria Ortega Stepper's work is very tropical. Do you want to do a tropical forest? If you do, then this is perfect. Have a look at the kind of tropical shapes. Start looking at kind of clip arts of different silhouettes and shapes and things you can use. I might actually use a bit of brown in here as well. Some of her work, she uses a little bit of brown. Not too much, because it might be a little bit polarising against the other things. 
will bring attention to some of the patterns. And obviously this is where you can build this up however you like. Could do another layer of trees if you wanted to. You can see in this example here, I start building up even more layers of trees in those edges of the dark blue. I actually think that worked quite well. Mix that in. Even darker, I think. Start bringing in another layer. You know, if the aim, if the main focus of this piece is about the trees, make the trees the main focus. Again, move back to my thicker brush because I want thicker lines, save some time. And that's essentially what we'd be going for. I might even bring, obviously we've started bringing some of those darker colours down, but lower down at the bottom, you might want to actually just start blending in some darker colours. We obviously started off with that really light wash, actually bring some of those colours down. Blend some of these shapes in to the colour. And then after that dries, I might even go in with a really dark blackish browny colour, not never black, but maybe mixing a shade of black in with some of my colours and getting some of those very, very dark browny shapes in, you know, somewhere in there. If they weren't, if it wasn't still wet, it would work. But you get what I mean. So we're just building it up. So that, in essence, is what we want to do with Maria Tegra Stepper's work. And hopefully you can see the layers there. You can see these ones here. This could be a beautiful double page spread in your book. So obviously you've got an A4 book. You could, you could even wash a background of paper. So you could get this all lovely and colourful. In fact, I'm going to do it. Why not? Paper to burn. So I'm going to start off just practising with all of these kind of colours I've already started looking at. I'm ready to take a stepper. Colours, getting my background done, washing it in. That is going to take forever to dry. But oh well. Maybe I'll splash some colour on there, make something a bit interesting. Your backgrounds are important. Presentation is so important. It just, as soon as an examiner flicks through your book and thinks, oh, OK, that looks good. It's, it puts you on the right foot. Obviously, your writing, the work you do has to be relevant and important. But if you can just show that you've presented your work, well, it puts you in the right stead. Puts, you in the, puts your examiner in the right frame of mind to go, ah, this is someone that's put some effort and time into the work. It's probably going to be really good. It doesn't matter how wonderful your artist research is and how what lovely writing you've done. If mm, I might have done that too similar a colour actually, I might have to go a bit darker. I don't think I've gone dark enough. Okay, so you could do a what coloured background if you want. Or obviously, some of your experiment pages, that experiment I did there, you could do a full page one like this. It'd be beautiful. You know, you could do this as a background, a darker background, start doing your trees on it. That would be absolutely stunning. You can see I just put lots of water, it's going to take forever to dry. But those patches of colour, you could leave that, that could be a background, and then you could start doing these trees on top. So try different colour combinations. Obviously there I've gone yellow, really soft yellow to blues in the front. Do this, put some blue and some dark green and things in the background. Okay, what I could then do on this page is I could layer these up. I wouldn't have to put them all in, but I could potentially present these. Maybe not all of them. Maybe I'll go straight into that one. And you could do a little bit of annotation on this page about how you've gone about getting to this. This as a double page would be fantastically strong with some good annotation saying, I'm, look, I've just done a research page on Marie Ortega Stepper. I'm going to teach myself step by step how to paint in her style. And we have our stages, our four stages. Maybe now that that's dry, I could add a little bit of the detail I've been adding onto that one. This is the small kind of practice one where you show each layer separately. I'll put that on just because there's not a lot of that on right now. Maybe some leaves. The leaves are quite important, the little extra patterns and shapes. Maria Ortega Stepper is all about pattern and design. So don't kind of forego that bit. She is all about the little leaves all of the little patterns, maybe some leaves on the trees. Look at that, actually, I quite like that. Maybe we need to get some leaves on our trees. Experimentation, it's all about trying some things out. Maria Tegra Stepper is usually all about that kind of pattern and detail. I quite like that, actually. I think we might need some leaves. 
Look at that, little flicks. Little flicks that get a little bit more pointed at the end. Use your brush shape. Your brush is already quite ready for leaves. Ah, oh, that looks so much better, doesn't it? We like a few leaves. So don't forget to add that onto there. I probably need my tiny brush for this. Why didn't I think of leaves before? If we're going to do a, a, like a living tree, then we're going to want some of that on there. Doesn't that look beautiful? That is the page, double page I'd like you to have a go at. What we'll do next after this, we'll have a look at doing a similar technique with watercolour again, but with browns and blacks and greys. And I'll do you a video for that next as well. And then we can go about, once we've practised this and learned how to do it, we can go about the ripping up the layers and combining them. I think that work really well. So sorry that was a very long video. Have a little try. I'll send you some photographs of this as well and you can have your own go. I am very excited about this, Kevin. It's going to work very well.